The year 1963 brought about some of the greatest changes in American history. Some of these memorable changes were incredibly positive, but others were devastating. American people at the time were experiencing severe whiplash from the constant, tumultuous upheavals to everyday life. Part of what made life in the 60s so difficult for many Americans was the push and pull between the traditional gender roles of the 50s and the arrival of the counterculture. More conservative Americans felt as though their entire worldview was being challenged, and they feared for the loss of stability and comfort which their lifestyle provided. Meanwhile, the more liberal youth rebelled against sameness and a lifestyle they viewed as suffocating. Ideas of feminism and sexual liberation, which were once very taboo, were brought into the open by bold younger people. Popular culture began to shift a lot as well. In 1963, the Beatles became increasingly popular, which eventually led to the craze known as Beatlemania. 1963 was also the very year that the smiley face was invented, and soon the image could be found on most anything, including mugs, t-shirts, and bumper stickers. As women began to explore their identity more, pants and slacks became more mainstream. While many people still opposed women wearing anything other than dresses or skirts, pants became increasingly trendy. Of course, long skirts and dresses with tight waists were still incredibly popular at the time. Popular toys for children at the time included Bozo the Clown talking doll, Casper the Ghost, and troll dolls. The cost of living in 1963 was also wildly different from what it is today. A gallon of gas cost on average just 29 cents, and people could usually buy a loaf of bread for only 22 cents. A new house cost just $12,650 on average, and the average new car cost $3,233. Of course, while these prices may seem insanely low compared to prices right now, it's important to keep inflation in mind. After all, a person's average yearly income was only $5,807. In today's video, we're going to travel back in time to the year 1963. While 1963 brought tragedy in the form of a beloved president's assassination, it was an amazing year for the civil rights movement. However, the year starts with the birth of one of the greatest athletes the world has ever known. Factsverse presents Time Capsule – The Year 1963 February 17, Michael Jordan is born. Michael Jordan was born on February 17, 1963. He is viewed by acclamation to be the greatest basketball player in American history. While he no longer plays basketball for the NBA, his hard work was essential to the popularization of the NBA across the globe during the 1980s and 1990s. He played for the Chicago Bulls between 1985 and 1993, and then again between 1995 and 1998. After a brief retirement from the NBA and an experimental stint in minor league baseball, he retired again from the NBA between 1999 and 2000, but he returned to play for the Washington Wizards between 2001 and 2003. Even though he has long since retired from basketball, Michael Jordan remains an inspiration and a cultural icon. In 1984, the first year that he played for the NBA, Nike created a signature shoe for him called Air Jordans. These shoes are still popular even today, and even though Michael Jordan retired almost 20 years ago, he remains an icon for young basketball players around the world. March 21st, Alcatraz Prison Closes The infamous Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, located off the coast of San Francisco, California, first opened its doors in August of 1934. It operated for 29 years as a high-security prison, and it gained much notoriety over the years. Alcatraz was reserved for the worst prisoners, especially those who were prone to escape attempts. The conditions were brutally inhumane, causing many of the prisoners to lose their sanity over time. Many prisoners managed to kill guards during escape attempts, and other prisoners killed fellow inmates. People began raising questions about how humane Alcatraz truly was, and the conditions slowly improved. However, in June of 1962, three inmates escaped the prison. While the official investigators concluded that the escapees likely drowned in the ocean, rumors still surfaced that they managed to survive. The escape, coupled with the extreme expenses required to keep the prison operational, made the government realize that it was no longer viable as a secure facility. Alcatraz closed officially on March 21, 1963. It remains open today, but only as a museum and popular tourist attraction. 
Many tourists visit it, hoping for a glimpse of some of the rumored ghosts which haunt the premises, although of course there's no evidence of any actual paranormal activity occurring anywhere within the old prison's walls. April 2, the USSR launches Luna 4. In 1962, NASA launched Ranger 4, which became America's first spacecraft to land on another celestial body. However, three years earlier, in 1959, the USSR became the first country to land a spacecraft on the moon. That mission was called Luna 2. That same year, they launched Luna 3, which became the first spacecraft to photograph the far side of the moon. However, it wasn't until 1963 that the USSR would launch Luna 4. The United States sat with bated breath, terrifying of losing another win to the Soviet Union. Luna 4 was the USSR's attempt at the world's first soft landing on the moon, which would be essential to land a human on the moon. Luna 4 was supposed to provide more photographs which would help researchers better understand the surface of the moon. However, much to America's relief, Luna 4 missed the moon by 5,179.9 miles, and it instead remained inside Earth's orbit. Unfortunately for the USSR, the next four Luna missions would also be considered failures, and it wasn't until Luna 9, which was launched in 1966, that the mission was considered a success. April 7. Jack Nicklaus wins his first Masters golf tournament. Jack Nicklaus is widely revered as one of the greatest professional golfers of all time. Throughout his career, he won 117 professional tournaments, and he won 18 major championships, setting the world record. Tiger Woods comes in second place with 15 major championship wins, setting Jack Nicklaus considerably in the lead. Jack Nicklaus was only 22 when he won his first Masters golf tournament on April 7, 1963. The tournament took place between April 4 and April 7. He was the youngest Masters winner at the time, and he took home $20,000 as his winner's share. This prodigy golfer would later go on to win countless awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2005 and the Congressional Gold Medal in 2015. He officially retired from tournament golf in 2005, but that has not stopped him from playing for pleasure. June 12, Cleopatra is released. The 1963 film Cleopatra was directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz. Mankiewicz adapted the screenplay, alongside Ronald McDougall and Sidney Buckman, from a novel entitled The Life and Times of Cleopatra. The novel was written in 1957 by Carlo Maria Franzero. The film Cleopatra starred the talented actress Elizabeth Taylor in the titular role. It was the most expensive film to produce at the time, and it cost 20th Century Fox so much money that they almost went bankrupt. Thankfully, the film was highly successful, making it the highest-grossing film of the year. It earned $57.7 million at the box office, and it won four of its nine Academy Award nominations. Lead actress Elizabeth Taylor became the first woman to ever earn $1 million for a single film, making her the highest-paid actress of her time. However, despite the success that it brought her, Elizabeth Taylor had few kind things to say about the film. In one interview, she remarked that they had to cut out the heart, the essence, the motivations, the very core. It should have been about three large people, but it lacked reality and passion. I found it vulgar. June 16. The USSR launches Vostok 6. Despite the Luna 4's failure in April, the USSR wasn't even close to giving up on their efforts to make it to the moon. Vostok 6 launched on June 16, and its passenger, Valentina Tereshkova, became the first woman to ever reach space. After about three days in orbit, Vostok 6 landed with its passenger entirely intact. Unfortunately, Valentina Tereshkova's in-flight experience was less than satisfactory. Her headset was not working as it should have, which had also been a problem reported during Vostok 5. Furthermore, while the space agency had remembered to pack toothpaste along with her food and water, they had forgotten to pack a toothbrush. Tereshkova also reported various body pains, and at one point she threw up while attempting to eat. She later clarified that the vomit was due to the taste of the food, however, rather than any physical ailment. July 1st, the U.S. Postal Service introduces nationwide zip codes. We may take zip codes for granted today, but everything had to start somewhere. Before 1963, the United States Postal Service realized that it needed a more efficient tool for organizing mail, especially as it had become more widely used. While the United States did have postal zones as early as the 1940s, it soon became clear that a more organized system was required. The acronym ZIP stands for Zone Improvement Plan and the term ZIP was used to encourage morale toward zip codes. It was believed that the name ZIP 
would cause people to feel like their mail was zipping along more quickly by using the code. Today, zip codes are essential for any postal worker, and they're also used for internet routing, credit card security, gathering statistics, and many other applications. August 28th, Martin Luther King Jr. attends the March on Washington. Martin Luther King Jr. attended the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, which was organized by Asa Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin. The peaceful protest was attended by about a quarter of a million people, all of whom marched through the streets and gathered at the Lincoln Memorial. It was one of the largest protests for human rights in American history. The protest included many different speakers aside from Martin Luther King Jr., including Roy Wilkins, John Lewis, and Walter Ruther. All of the speakers addressed serious injustices against black Americans. Of course, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech would become his most famous later on. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. His speech urged Americans to end racism in the country. He remarked that even though slaves had been freed by the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 100 years ago, black Americans still weren't treated as equals due to segregation, discrimination, and police brutality. The attendees of the March on Washington also advocated for the passage of the Civil Rights Act, which would end segregation in public places as well as end employment discrimination based on sex, race, color, religion, or national origin. The Civil Rights Act was finally passed in 1964 and brought about great change for people of color throughout America. While the civil rights movement of the 60s was arguably the most momentous change in America at the time, popular culture also heavily influenced the country. Make sure you stick around until the very end of this video, where we'll reveal which famous band released singles that would launch a new craze across the globe. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. September 7th, the Pro Football Hall of Fame opens. On September 7th, the Pro Football Hall of Fame officially opened its doors in Canton, Ohio. The building is dedicated to honoring exceptional members of professional American football teams. This building idolizes players, coaches, franchise owners, and any other people who went above and beyond in their contribution to the sport. On average, four and eight new members are indicted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame each year, and there are now a total of 364 members. The Pro Football Hall of Fame rests in Canton, Ohio, because it's the birthplace of the NFL, which was founded in that very city on September 17, 1920, although it was known as the American Professional Football Association at the time. The members of Canton, Ohio held a fundraising event, which accumulated almost $400,000 to construct the building. September 15 a church is bombed in Birmingham, Alabama. The 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama became the victim of a horrible hate crime on September 15, 1963. The church had a primarily black congregation, and it was also a popular meeting place for leaders of the civil rights movement. As a result, four young African-American girls were killed, and there were many other people who were injured. Unfortunately, this was not an isolated incident. Racist people in Birmingham who opposed the civil rights movements would often make their own bombs and hide them in black churches or the homes of black families. This occurred so frequently that many people gave the city the nickname Bombingham. Unfortunately, many leaders of the civil rights movement had to risk their lives in order to attain rights and fight discrimination and segregation. Sometimes their actions led to dire consequences. Many civil rights leaders were assassinated or injured for their efforts. October 6, Los Angeles wins the World Series the New York Yankees had won the World Series in 1961 and 1962, but the two-time defending champions were hard-pressed to win against the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers absolutely dominated the field, finishing with a 4 to nothing score. The New York Yankees team had an abysmal batting average of just 171. Unfortunately for many viewers, broadcaster Mel Allen was suffering from acute laryngitis. His voice was hoarse throughout Game 4 until it finally gave out during the eighth inning. Vin Scully had to finally take over. Sadly, that would be Mel Allen's last year broadcasting for the World Series. Game 4 of the World Series was at the top of the Nielsen ratings for all sports-related content in 1963, and today it still remains the third most-watched World Series game in history. November 18th, AT&T releases the world's first touch-tone phones. Touch-tone phones were released to the public on November 18, 1963. The first model was designed with only 10 buttons, but a year later, a new model was released with 12 buttons and added the asterisk and the pound key. 
Surprisingly, however, the earliest concept of touch-tone dialing was developed in 1887, but the microtelephone push-button still relied on a manual dialing system rather than an automatic one. Touch-tone dialing systems were put on display at the World's Fair in 1962, and many people were awed by the technology. However, even though touch-tone phones would eventually overtake the old rotary model, rotaries remained quite popular for several years. Even though we have long since started using cell phones and smartphones, the push-button system remains in use, albeit more streamlined. November 22, President John F. Kennedy is assassinated President John F. Kennedy was one of the most popular presidents in his time, with the highest approval rating since that particular polling system was first introduced. On the afternoon of November 22, President John F. Kennedy rode in a motorcade through Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas. He traveled through several states during a trip that was officially designed to discuss conservation efforts as well as the use of natural resources. While he had not officially announced his intention to run for president a second time, the trip was also an effort to prepare for his second run in 1964. As the president stepped outside his hotel on the morning of November 22, he was greeted by thousands of warm citizens who were all ecstatic to meet their beloved president. However, the day would turn much darker as it progressed. President John F. Kennedy was accompanied by his wife and vice president in his motorcade as they rode through Dealey Plaza, but the president sat in a separate car within the motorcade from his companions. Around 12.30 p.m., shots rang through Dealey Plaza, and President John F. Kennedy was shot in the back of the neck. His assassinator, Lee Harvey Oswald, was detained just an hour later, but as he was being transferred to his new detention facility on November 24, he was shot and killed by Jack Ruby, a local of the area. President John F. Kennedy's death sent shockwaves rippling through America. He was dearly missed, and while his successor, President Lyndon B. Johnson, did his best to fill JFK's shoes, America was never the same again. November 23, Doctor Who airs The beloved BBC science fiction show Doctor Who first aired on November 23, 1963, just one day after the tragic death of President John F. Kennedy. In fact, the show was delayed by 80 seconds due to broadcast coverage of the president's death. Still, the show was immensely popular and the original series ran for a crazy 26 seasons. It was revived in 2005, and with numerous new seasons under its belt, it shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. This long-running TV show has remained in the hearts of British and American people alike, and it's often referenced in popular culture. December 26, The Beatles release I Wanna Hold Your Hand and I Saw Her Standing There. This beloved Beatles single was released in the UK on November 29th, and it wasn't released in the United States until December 26. However, this band was avidly consumed by teenage girls all over the country, and it led to a new craze known as Beatlemania. While we don't often think of them this way, the Beatles were technically the first boy band in the world. After all, thousands of teenage girls would show up to their concerts and scream and cry in delight at being so near their beloved stars. Of course, 1963 was just the start of their popularity, and this iconic band would become legendary after releasing dozens of albums. We'll see much more of them in the coming years. The year 1963 was a turbulent one, filled with both highs and lows. Do you remember this year for its good events or its bad ones? Let us know what the year 1963 means to you in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to Facts First for the next exciting installment of the Time Capsule series.